position very conveniently. We don't want to talk about Gaza's gas. We don't consider that to be an environment story. Somehow Palestine exists outside of the planetary environment. Um, but this was, this was basically something that I began to see was th there were patterns here. Um, and one of the other patterns that I want to mention very briefly before I go on um, was uh, the Guardian's reporting on, on HSBC. And there was be there's been a lot of hullabaloo about how there's been a number of uh, publications that have broken the Swiss leaks HSBC story, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Um, but there was another story um, in the UK uh, which didn't make headlines, um, which, uh, and, and it came from a whistleblower whose name was Nicholas Wilson, who basically had uncovered... While he was working for a firm of solicitors, he had uncovered um, a, a one billion pounds fraud that had been committed by a subsidiary of HSBC using uh, the, uh, the credit cards that you get from stores like, like retail stores like John Lewis and others. And what they were doing, they were doing these incremental overcharging of consumers. Um, and it was just adding up. And this process had taken place for more than a decade. And the scale had, had been estimated at about over a billion pounds, a huge award, bigger than the Swiss League scandal. Now, Nicholas Wilson, his case is currently still under investigation by the Financial Conduct Authority. I mean, there was a big cover-up. Um, there were the official agencies attempted to put it under the carpet, and eventually, um, after after kind of pushing forward, he's got another inquiry taking place. Um, but the Guardian refused to cover this. In fact, not, it wasn't just The Guardian, The Sunday Times, BBC. When I started to look into this, I ended up looking, looking into the different uh, media organisations in the UK that had actually investigated the story. Nicholas Rawson had spoken to dozens of mainstream media agencies who had actually conducted some quite detailed investigations. In fact, one of them, Private Eye, who's a well-known uh, magazine that kind of do this kind of muckraking thing sometimes where they're kind of comedic. They had had, I'd, I'd seen a whole draft, they'd got a whole draft, but they just spiked it. And I asked them, um, why did you spike this story? And they just said, we don't want to comment on this. Um, so, and like two days after I, after I did my story on Wilson's um, revelations, Private Eye suddenly published a kind of more watered down uh, thing on their story. So there was, so, so there was definitely this this problem. And one of the things I saw at Guardian was that the Guardian has all of these interesting links with HSBC. So one of the things you're probably not aware of is that um, HSB is one of the biggest advertising sponsors of the Guardian. They've given more uh, sponsorship to the Guardian than they've given to uh, the Telegraph, where there was a similar scandal that you might have heard of, where Peter Oborn, the chief political commentator came out and said that HSBC, because of their sponsorship and advertising agreements with The Telegraph, The Telegraph has not run any stories on HSBC corruption. Um, but The Guardian has got more money from HSBC, to, and, which has gone to growing its presence in the United States. And that's just one element of it. There are people who sit on the board of the Scott Trust Limited, which is not a trust, even though it's called the Scott Trust, but it's Scott Trust Limited. It's a private company. Um, and those people are people who have got links to the financial sector, um, people who have worked with HSBC, who have received sponsorship from HSBC, and so on and so forth. So is this, there is this big wider issue um, that the, the, the experience I had at The Guardian that I think uh, opens up this whole question that we've heard being discussed here of, corp of the corporate ownership and corporate structures and the whole, the whole way in which the media runs.